I want to thank everybody who took time to say happy birthday to me yesterday. I appreciate it. God bless you all. My next rosy is for all of you guys. God gave me this only begotten son. That's how I survived in these dirty rotten slums. These dirty rotten slums. These dirty rotten slums. God gave me this only begotten son. Praise be Jesus Christ. Now and forever. How you doing, my brothers and sisters in Christ? Welcome to another episode of Sunday Readers with Charlie the Catholic. Today is Father's Day. So I want to say a special happy Father's Day to all the fathers who are watching the show. You know, first and foremost, happy Father's Day to God the Father. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, for whom every family, every father derives his name. So God the Father comes first. You know, and of course, I like to say happy Father's Day to my dad. A couple weeks ago, he was able to come on the show. You guys met him. And I'd like to say Happy Father's Day to one special guy here. Come here, Hugo. Guys, everyone, let me introduce you to my father-in-law. This is my wife's dad. He comes with me to Mass every Sunday. God love this guy, you know? Amen. So, Happy Father's Day to happy you, Happy Father's Hugo. Day for everyone to be listening to the show, Charlie the Captain. Yeah, wepa! That's right. Gracias, suegro. Te quiero mucho. Okay. All right. And as you guys know, my daughter... Michaela the Catholic. So, before we move on, I also want to say Happy Father's Day to um, my spiritual fathers. You know, a lot of priests that God blessed me with to be in my life. I was blessed to have a lot of priests, a lot of spiritual fathers that were good men. You know, I like to highlight a few priests that are special to me. You know, going way back to when I was a kid. I was uh, in the parish San Juan Batista in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And our pastor there was Father Bernard Pistoni. Father Pistoni, man, he was a good priest. He's one of my um, earliest spiritual fathers I can remember. So happy Father's Day to you, Father Pistoni. And also Father Alan Wolf. This priest is God sent. I'm, I'm, I appreciate everything he's done. I'm thankful to God that he answered his vocation. He's been there in times of need through my family, when there was deaths in our family, you know. Also, I, I straight away, you know, as a kid, I was into church, but as a teenager, I straight away, I never completed my confirmation. And as an adult, the Lord started pulling on my heart to call me back home. So I was a Catholic. I didn't become another religion. I became secular. So then I became a Catholic again. So they don't call that a conversion. They call that a reversion. So in my adulthood, living in New Jersey, I had a reversion to the faith. And there was a, a parish called Queen of Peace that was very instrumental into my, my reversion. And I was blessed to have good spiritual fathers there too. So I like to say a happy Father's Day to who's now retired, Monsignor Bill Fredowski, uh Father Scott Anastasio. He's now a pastor at a new church. Congratulations, Father Scott, and happy Father's Day. Also, Father Heavy Hercules, that's the priest who performed the holy matrimony for my wife and I. These priests were very holy and, and instrumental, and I thank God for them. And now for my current pastor, Father Joe Mancini. Father Joe, happy Father's Day. This is a, a I can't say enough good things about him. I'm blessed to have Father Joe as my pastor. And especially when I was working in New York City, I would go to Mass every day. And there's a bunch of priests that, you know, that ministered to me that I would like to say Happy Father's Day to them. So all the priests at Holy Innocence in New York City and all the priests at St. Agnes Church in New York City, Happy Father's Day to you guys too. All right, is there anyone you want to say Happy Father's Day to? Uh, happy Father's Day to Father Joe. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. I'm really proud of them. I bet they're, I bet that they are hard workers. That's right. And show everyone your cool shirt. This it says. I have the coolest dad of all time. I hope your shirt isn't lying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look at my shirt. In honor of Saint Joseph, today is Father's Day. I have the hashtag Saint Joseph shirt, which is available on CharlieTheCatholic.com. What I like about this is you can wear it dressy or you can wear it casual. So it's, it's, it's versatile. Well, without further ado, let's get into today's readings. 
Today's reading, first reading, we're going to go to the book of Job. If you guys have never read the book of Job, I highly recommend it. It's a quick read, you know, and it um, gives us an understanding of, of, of God. You know, God is God and we are not God. And that's that. It's just plain and simple. A reading from the book of Job. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Or who enclosed the sea with doors, when bursting forth it went out from the womb? When I made a cloud its garment, and thick darkness its swaddling band, and I placed boundaries on it, and set a bolt and doors, and I said, Thus far you shall come, but no farther, and here shall your proud waves stop. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's responsorial psalm comes from Psalm 107. Psalm 107. Some sailed over the ocean in ships, earning their living on the seas. They saw what the Lord can do, His wonderful acts on the seas. He commanded, and a mighty wind began to blow and stirred up the waves. The ships were lifted high in the air and plunged down into the depths. In such danger the sailors lost their courage. Then in their trouble they called to the Lord, and He saved them from their distress. He calmed the raging storm, and the waves became quiet. They were glad because of the calm, and He brought them safe to the port they wanted. They must thank the Lord for His constant love, for the wonderful things He did for them. Now, moving to today's second reading, we're going to hear St. Paul. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. For the love of Christ controls us, because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died. And He died for all, that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once regarded Christ from a human point of view, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's gospel reading, we're going to go to St. Mark. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was, and other boats were with him. A great storm of wind arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. They woke him. Teacher! Do you not care if we perish? And he awoke and rebuked the wind. Peace! Be still! And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. Why are you afraid? Have you no faith? They were filled with awe. Who then is this that even wind and sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ! (laughs) All right, that was loud enough. (laughs) Did you hear in today's gospel reading how they were in a storm and the 12 apostles who are fishermen, so they they know how to ride a boat. They know when it's stormy, they know how to maneuver the waves. But this storm was so bad that they thought they were going to die. And Jesus was right there in the boat. What do you think Jesus was doing? He was sleeping. Our blessed Lord was so tired. He was in the midst of the storm, waves crashing, and he still was sleeping. That right there is his human nature. I could relate to being so tired and sleeping. But I want you to know this. This is something we got to contemplate. In our life, we're going to go through storms. You know, not necessarily on a boat with waves, but we're going to have a lot of problems, a lot of stress, where things don't seem like they're going right. Like today, trying to get ready for the show. It seemed like everything was going wrong. Uh, things were breaking. Things weren't lining up. It was pretty chaotic. You know, it's going crazy in life. It's like a storm. 
But we got to always remember who we have with us and have faith. We always got to know we have Jesus. Jesus is with us. Have you ever had a time where you was going through a storm and you feel like you lost faith? Like, man, where are you at, Jesus? And then Jesus comes and he fixes everything. That's you and I as the apostles on the boat. You know, Jesus, he tells us what little faith you have. Always have faith in God, even in the midst of, of, uh, of the storms, when things is getting rocky. And trust me, last year was a rocky year, not only for myself, but I'm sure for many of you. So we got to always remember, we have the blessed Lord sleeping in the stern with us. So let's have faith. Let's not let's rush to wake him up and be scared. You know, let's have faith and know that he's in control. The wind, the waves, the sea, everything obeys him. That's what God was saying to Job. You know, God is God. And Job is not God. You know, God's wisdom and his power is beyond the capacity of Job. And yourself, and myself included, we cannot understand God. And we should never demand an explanation or a reason for God's divine actions. You know, God's God and we're not God. Where were we when God laid down the foundation of the earth and told the water, okay, you go no further right there, and told the land, right here is where you go. Where were we? You know, when God created the cosmos, where were we? We weren't there. God created us. God is God. We're not God. You see, God, who created the heavens and the earth, the winds, the seas, they obey him, as God the Son demonstrated in today's gospel. See? We serve an awesome God, a powerful God, that we could have confidence that his power and might is all powerful, almighty. Well, with that said, and some announcements coming to the show, we got a few guests. I, I mentioned last week about having some guests. We're going to have some guests coming in next month. I'm looking forward to that. I hope things work out good. And yeah. Remember, go to charliethecatholic.com and like and share this page. I appreciate it. Tune in next week. God will, I see you. God bless. Love you. Bye. God gave me this only begotten son. That's how I survived in these dirty rotten slum. These dirty rotten slum. These dirty rotten slum. God gave me this only begotten son. Hey, yo, no matter what I'm in, he's my Lord, my friend, my savior, who died for my sins. And truly we need him. They brutally beat him until he was bleeding. Until I would see him, then I would believe in. He was born of a virgin to the thorns he was wearing. And I swore I would serve him, but I slacked off. I'm on the block trying to get this pack off. And listen to the pastor was my last thought, my last conviction. I'm on the block pitching, the plot thickens. Stop tripping, listen. I'd rather chase cash than sit up and mask till I sit up and ask him for forgiveness for my actions. He received lashes through the passion, through the passions. He went through pain that my brain couldn't fathom They grabbed him and stabbed him in the abdomen People laughed at him and spat on him But he's still dead if you ask for him Go ahead and ask for him He rode with 12 disciples Fought the devil like the archangel Michael Instead read your bible Ask yourself what would I do I'd probably go psycho The thoughts of a nail going right through My palms I pause and hang on the cross Right in front of my mom